Hello YouTube, my name is Paul Lewis. Today we're going to be talking about easing. Hit that intro. So, I don't know about you, often I work with animations in my code. Sometimes, or as much as I can, I try and use CSS animations for reasons I can talk about in another video if you like. In this case, um, what I want to do is I want to talk about a situation where you maybe need to do an animation you don't necessarily want to use or don't have access to a library for doing animations and there are some amazing ones out there and you should check those out. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe the animation is a bit complicated and you can't use uh, CSS animations or keyframes. Uh, maybe it's a dynamic animation of some description. And maybe you found that the Web Animations API support isn't to your tastes and you don't want to use the polyfill, for example. So you may be in that situation and I know I have been. And so this little tip is all about making that situation work. So what I've got on screen is I've got an animation. Uh, when I click on this box, it slides to the side. Disclaimer, full disclaimer, that should be a CSS animation. It isn't, but that's so that it lets me show you what I'm talking about. So it's the simplest possible thing I could think of to demonstrate the point, but to be super clear, this should be a CSS animation. So let's dive into the code. Okay, so we've got this uh, little bit of code that grabs a reference to the box. This code is obviously not production ready, it's just me showing you what I mean. When I click it, it starts this animation which calls move. Inside move, we pick up the current time using performance.now. Uh, we declare a duration. Again, this is hard coded. You probably wouldn't do that. Uh, and then we have this update function. And inside the update function, we figure out uh, how much time has passed. We divide it by the duration. And that gives us a number between zero and one linearly. So as you're halfway through, position would be 0.5. And then we translate the box by position times by, again, a hard-coded value of 200 pixels so that it slides. Boop. You can see that again. Let me show you. Pop. Robotic, you see? Now, when that position value is greater than or equal to 1, i.e. at the end of the animation, we're going to snap it back to the start, which you saw uh, when we were looking at it on screen. And we're using request animation frame, which is the browser's way of saying, okay, I'm about to draw something to screen. If you've got any work to do that involves visuals, now would be a really good time to do it. And that's exactly what we do. We say, okay, I have an update to make to the box. And so we're kind of working with the browser here to make sure our animations are scheduled properly. All with me so far, I hope. Cool. So how do we make this uh, easier? E ease to eat. How do we make it look nicer? Okay, what I normally do is I introduce an ease function, which is, well, so the value that we want to ease. And it looks a little bit like this. Uh, we return an eased value of one minus math.pow, one minus value, and then raise to some power or other. Now you can pump this into uh, some kind of charting and you'd see what this actually looks like. It's just kind of a curve, depending on how strong power is. Uh, how big a number power is, there's the sort of strength of the curve that you get. Let me show you what I mean. So let's default it to like three, which we can do in ES 2015 style code. We can default the power to say three. Um, and what this allows us to do is it allows us to um, retime that linear value from zero to one to something a little bit nicer. So if we say this dot ease time over duration, like so. Uh -huh. Let's see what happens now. Oh, you see how it slows down? I make sound effects when I'm animating. Sure. And the bigger that power, the more we slow down. Let's do it like seven. I don't even know what that is. You know, like cubic, quartic, quintic. I don't know, but it'll be stronger. So here's a cool thing. If we want to, we can now override this because it's defaulting to seven, which is quite a strong, it's quite a strong ease. See, I, because it's a parameter, we can just go change it back to three. Oh, I'll tell you what, if we change it to one, look at this, back to linear. Haha, <laughs> we can still do linear with this, but if we say switch it up to three, get that nice little bit of slow down at the end of the animation. Cool, so there you have it. Like the simplest little easing function that you can just drop into your animations if you don't have access to CSS animations or 
you don't want to use uh, an animation library as I said, there are plenty of animation libraries out there and some of them are phenomenal and you should definitely check those out. But if you find yourself in a bit of a spot and you're thinking, I need to ease this and I oh, I can't do that quickly. Yeah, you can, it's a one-liner. It's one of my favorite little one-liners. I use it all the time. Now you know. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the big thumbs up, that helps me a bunch. And I will catch you, I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah.